No matter what the press is telling you, the Little Mermaid is floundering. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. The Little Mermaid is the latest in a string of pointless Disney remakes that has been a controversial topic since the casting of Halle Bailey was first announced. The outrage stemmed from her not looking like Ariel. Ardent defenders of Disney were quick to point the finger at racist fans for the dislike of the diverse casting choice. The lead-up to the film was a minefield. People used children to defend their arguments. Disney pulled another Captain Marvel where they tried to turn The Little Mermaid into a cultural movement by making the film about bigger issues facing the world, and lo and behold, it failed. The opening weekend for The Little Mermaid was strong-ish. In the US, it beat Aladdin. Aladdin would go to gross over a billion dollars at the box office, which excited fans of The Little Mermaid. They expected their new Yas Queen of the Sea to sit atop her box office throne. Well, spoiler alert, that's not happening, because the American audience may like it allegedly, but the rest of the world absolutely hates this film. In a rare situation for a Disney tentpole, particularly a live-action title based on a treasured classic animated musical, the Little Mermaid looks to bank more at the domestic box office than ultimately overseas. Off a reported $250 million production cost and $140 million global marketing spend, The Little Mermaid could break even. However, anything less than the low $400 million global threshold, and this fish is apt to sinking to a loss around $20 million. Now here's the spin. They're claiming it's not a huge disappointment, but nonetheless a disappointment. One film financier insider told Deadline that the blockbuster streak is often associated with Disney. The studio's summer slate remains in a precarious position after it boldly world premiered two major titles at Cannes Film Festival to lackluster reviews, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is lowered to a 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, and Pixar's Elemental, which is at a 58% Rotten. The Little Mermaid's ebb tide at the box office is extreme when juxtaposed against the high watermark seen from the last Memorial Day Disney live-action feature adaptation of a tune, Aladdin, back in 2019. That Will Smith pick cleared $1 billion worldwide, 66% of that gross generated abroad, which also counted $53.4 million from China. The Little Mermaid's Chinese ticket sales were non-existent with a $2.5 million start. Given the quick burn of U.S. titles in the PRC, some believe that this film may not even get a double-digit final gross there. <laughs> well, who couldn't have seen that one coming? Remember, folks, they took off Finn from the Chinese poster of The Force Awakens. Well, they shrunk him down to the size of a thumbnail. And the Black Panther, they put a mask on him. I wonder why these films aren't big hits in China. Should The Little Mermaid break even, it won't. It would be a rare feat for a tentpole to do so on the back of its domestic box office. Typically, a tentpole sees 60% of the global box office total or more coming from overseas. Typically, Disney titles see a 50-50 split between domestic and international box office. Again, the slowdown for The Little Mermaid, despite a strong stateside weekend of $118 million over Memorial Day, ahead of Aladdin's $116 million, and a running total through yesterday, stems from the backlash the pick has received in certain offshore markets, i.e. Korea, China, France, Germany, and more, over the casting of Halle Bailey in the titular role, as well as review bombing. More on that in a moment. In a break-even scenario of $560 million, Look, I'm just going to stop right there because I'm not going to read you pointless numbers. It's not going to make it that far because it has other hurdles to deal with. Now, to quote the Joker, Police, get what you fucking deserve! This is a prime example of why companies should not do these woke reimaginings. Woke is such a vague term these days. Or is it really? But in other terms, making films that help these companies raise their ESG scores piss off audiences around the world. Modern reimaginings do not need to exist in the case of Disney films, but if they make them, they should stay closer to the source material. After all, people have connections to those versions. Here's a list of all the live-action Disney remakes and their box office takes. As you can see, some films are fairly close to their originals. Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Jungle Book, and Aladdin are all big hits. Alice in Wonderland, which is directed by Tim Burton and offered his bizarre visual style, was also a big hit. Outside of those films, the rest are fairly disappointing, with some outright flopping. Streaming had some effect on these numbers, which is another mistake Disney made, but overall, the content of the film decides the success of these pictures. While it's obvious that pointless remakes aren't working as well as Disney would hope, that's not stopping the shills in the press from coming to defend the multi-billion dollar corporation that doesn't give a damn about them. Since The Little Mermaid was announced, anyone who has not been gushing with excitement over the reimaginings was labeled as a racist bigot, or some other overused phrase that's lost its meaning since 2016. Normally, the press paints American audiences this way, but the rest of the world hates this film, and of course, any movie led by women that isn't well-received needs extra protection. Women-led films are not allowed to fail on their own. 
The Little Mermaid has been the target of racist attacks ever since Disney announced Halle Bailey was cast as Ariel. Whatever you might actually think about the film, The Little Mermaid has been the target of a mass of racist online vitriol over the decision to headline Halle Bailey as the human-thirsting mermaid Ariel. Review aggregating sites like IMDb are now trying to dampen the impact of one-star reviews by weighing those grades. Hmm, this sounds a lot like The Last Jedi. Let's see if there's any similarities. The Disney live-action remake saw wide release on May 26, and since then it's received over 32,000 ratings on IMDb, where it currently sits at a 7 out of 10. Out of those, more than 13,000 gave the flick one star. A small notice at the top of the ratings page reads, Our rating mechanism has detected unusual voting activity on this title. To preserve the reliability of our rating system, an alternate weighting calculation has been applied. Yeah, you're not that reliable. According to IMDb's Frequently Asked Questions, the site publishes weighted voted averages and notifies when unusual voting activity is detected. An alternate weighting calculation may be applied in order to preserve the reliability of our system. The site does not say what kind of mechanism it uses to rate movies. And also no transparency. Gizmodo reached out to IMDb for comment, but did not immediately hear back. IMDb has posted this notice in the past for online film vote stuffing. Such was with the Bollywood film The Cashmere Files, which was released in March. In that case, the film was garnering a heap of positive reviews and mean user averages weighted lower. The director of the film complained that the site's review manipulation was unusual and unethical. Other review sites have been hit with a mass wave of anti-Little Mermaid sentiment. Deadline reported that the IMDb notice appears on the US, Canadian, UK, Brazil, and Mexican versions of the sites. The campaign is likely being driven by bots. There it is! Remember, there was articles written academically by a guy named Dr. Morton Bay about the bots, the Russian bots that were used to destroy the scores of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Disney's playbook, it's so overused at this point. As UK-based gossip columnist Rob Shooter told Fox 5, there's a rash of negative Little Mermaid reviews specifically targeting European sites. The German site Movie Pilot showed The Little Mermaid sitting at a .7 out of 10, though it's increased to 5 out of 10. That ain't good either. Reddit users on the box office subreddit noticed the French site Allociné also put out a statement similar to IMDb. The notice reads, Currently, we observe an unusual amount of distribution ratings on this film, which should encourage caution. We encourage you to form your own opinion on the film. I think a lot of people are. You just don't like their opinions. Review bombing is nothing new, and bigots are not squeamish about bombarding user reviews such as episodes of The Last of Us, which centered around a gay couple. There have been similar campaigns against other sites to try to excise these kind of rating manipulations by maintaining a pool of verified user post scores. The Little Mermaid currently sits at 95% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, but that score is based on verified audiences. Yeah, I'll trust that score when we land on Mars. These Disney films have become so political because Disney wants it that way. Gone are the days of making something so good it's must-see. Now it's all about obligation. Obligation to anything is a chore and these reimaginings are made obligatory. Disney convinces dullards that The Little Mermaid is progress in the real world. Yes, black women have led films for decades, won Oscars, and all sorts of things in the entertainment industry, but only because Disney is doing it, it's a first and it should be celebrated. No. Getting political hurts these films because if they're not perfect, someone will find holes to pick at, and now critics are picking apart for wiping away slavery. Isn't it fun when Disney fails this hard? The Little Mermaid has been criticized by a prominent media diversity advocate for failing to acknowledge the horrors of slavery in the Caribbean. Marcus Ryder, an influential British campaigner who also chairs the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, celebrated the casting of Halle Bailey but took issue with the film's glossy depiction of racial harmony. After watching the Disney remake with his six-year-old son, Ryder felt compelled to write a blog about the movie, which he said missed an opportunity to gently educate children. Ryder said The Little Mermaid appears to be set in the 18th century at a time of African chattel slavery, but the fictional Caribbean islanders close to the Atlantica live in a world free from human rights atrocities. I don't think we do our children any favors by pretending that slavery didn't exist, he wrote in a blog, titled Disney's Little Mermaid, Caribbean Slavery and Telling the Truth to Children. That's a great title. Setting the fantastical story in this time and place is literally the equivalent of setting a love story between a Jew and a Gentile in 1940s Germany and ignoring the Jewish Holocaust. Ryder acknowledged that The Little Mermaid is a fantasy story and it does not need to be arduously faithful to history, but he argued that children are not well served by overlooking the past. He said that Disney could have set the film in Haiti after it had overthrown the shackles of slavery, with Ariel meeting her prince against the backdrop of burgeoning racial harmony. We owe it to our children to give them the most amazing fantastical stories possible to help with their imagination grow. We do this by not whitewashing out difficult parts of history, we do it by embracing our rich history and empowering them with the truth.
Ryder posted about the blog on Twitter, but received blowback from the users on the social network who said the Little Mermaid should be treated as nothing more than a fairy tale. That's a fairy tale if you think that's going to be the case, after you people did it. And I mean you people. He later deleted the viral tweet because it had been widely misunderstood. Why am I not surprised? The idiots on Twitter got something wrong. Feelings, emotions, they supersede logic and reasoning, and that's why we are where we are today. In a Twitter thread clarifying his comments, Ryder said he enjoyed the film which he praised for its portrayal of black beauty. Of course you did, of course you're saying these things. He goes on to say, The sad reality is that this is a great film. It left me concerned that Disney did not take seriously this very sensitive time and place in which do the atrocities happen there should be treated very carefully, especially for impressionable children, he wrote. In a statement to Deadline, Ryder said, The whole affair points to how important representation is, and though it's not fun to be the target of a Twitter onslaught, the positive, I hope, it demonstrates to a film studio that if you increase the diversity, you can get a loyal, committed audience that will defend your film vociferously from even the slightest perceived criticism. That type of audience engagement, money simply cannot buy. Well, there's no money to be made here, so, yeah, you can say your things to appease this Twitter audience, but they're not spending the dollars. We wouldn't be making this video if the movie wasn't fucking failing. It's a business! God damn it, it's a business! <laughs> Now, Disney has not been contacted for comment, and we're going to leave that one alone, because why would they comment on that? God damn it, these people do eat their own. Read Wokebusters for more on that later. The Twitter mob is the worst. Now, back to the story at hand. The Little Mermaid is not only going to fail on this level, it's going to be a financial failure. At the beginning of this video, we talked about the break-even number for the film in the low $400 million range, but the article mentions $560 million globally, so it's got to be somewhere in there. As of now, where is this film sitting? Well, as of this recording, the film ain't living on a prayer because it's not even halfway there. The Little Mermaid brought in a global total of $209 million. Defenders of the Flame are claiming that this film will pick up this weekend, but there's big competition coming. Spider-Man. Not the real one, but the other, other, other one. That's less successful than the real deal. Spider-Verse 2 is out this weekend, which will take the family dollars away from The Little Mermaid, leaving it beached. The first film was well received, and the new film is highly anticipated. The Little Mermaid's box office dreams are drowning right before its very eyes. The Little Mermaid was a bad idea. Live action remakes are, but these reimaginings where they replace timeless storytelling with modern identity politics is a formula for disaster. People don't like woke reimaginings. They will support original ideas or see films that interpret their favorite characters faithfully. How's that Super Mario Brothers film doing? Warp zoning all the way to the bank. <laughs> So folks, what do you think about this situation? You can always see these things coming from a mile away. Race swapping, gender swapping, it never works. Look at Ghostbusters 2016, look at Terminator Dark Fate, look at this, look at that. Anytime a film switches something that's beloved and the creators get political, it absolutely fails. It's never a formula for success. The numbers spell disaster for the film at sacrifice, which never is even gonna happen in the first place, but I digress. Of course it sounds like I'm taking joy in this because I am. No movie should ever be marketed this way. No movie should ever be treated as an obligation, uh, a savior to a race of people, this, that, and the other. Halle Bailey doesn't need to be going out there talking about, oh, it's changing little girls' lives. No, it's a movie. It's a movie. Movies can inspire you. They can make you want to do things, but they're not going to change your worldview. They're not going to all of a sudden fix the world's problems. Even the biggest movies like Avatar 2, what did that do? Did it change the rights for blue people on this planet? No, it made a bunch of money because it looked pretty and that's all she wrote. It didn't turn it into a political message about this, that, and the other. James Cameron is smart enough to keep his mouth shut about that shit when he wants to make money. Same thing with the original Star Wars. How did that change the world? It opened up people's mind to creativity. It inspired them to become writers, artists, all sorts of things. But it didn't change race relations anywhere in the world. And when you introduce Black Jedi in the early 2000s, what does that do? Nothing. It just says Samuel L. Jackson's a badass motherfucker and it made money because it's Star Wars. But when you force identity politics into these movies, what happens with the sequel trilogy? They're not successful. You may look at the numbers and say, but Jeff, it made a billion dollars. Yeah, but the thing cost $350 million each to make, and that's just the production budget, not on top of the marketing and all this other shit. These movies were prohibitively expensive, they significantly made less each film, and they pissed off a fan base 
to the point where Star Wars is pretty much dead. No matter what you put on TV, no matter what you put in the theater, it ain't coming back because you spent years shitting on your core audience. And it's the same with Little Mermaid. It's Disney in general. They get involved with all of this stupid stuff and it's not working. Who's ever behind the scenes making these decisions should be shot into the sun with a slingshot or slingshot around the sun and go back in time to see what it was like when real movies were made and how it's done. This is a modern problem. 15 years ago, this wasn't the issue, but it is today because all of these people have their heads firmly planted up their asses and they don't believe anything but the positivity they get back. Twitter is the worst place to do test marketing. Oh my God, the people on Twitter love it. The people on Twitter convinced Sony to put Morbius back in theaters and that was a huge fail. Maybe you should look at the real research of the real data and take a look inside yourselves and think, is this a good idea? Would I watch this myself? And don't give me the Disney spin of, oh, of course, all of our fantasy fairy tales are amazing. I'm going to watch them all. No, you ain't. Be honest, executives. Be honest with yourselves and be honest with the audiences. Audiences are being honest with their lack of interest in this film. You can't guilt millions of people to go drop a couple bucks to support a stupid movie. I don't care how virtuous it is. I don't care how impactful it is. I don't care what they claim it's going to do. It's not going to fix the world's problems. It isn't. It's just a Disney movie. And well, once Disney realizes that it's just a Disney movie, I think we'll all be better off. Speaking of better off, folks, you'll be better off by ignoring a lot of this mainstream content and supporting the independent stuff. Just because it's made by one person doesn't mean it lacks any quality. So check out my comic, Wokebusters. Go to wokebusterscomic.com right now. I'll have the link in the description of this video. It's a Ghostbusters parody that makes fun of all of this woke entertainment. It's the story of four guys. I can't say four scientists because only three of us are in the story. Who go into business after a string of woke outrage creates literal monsters that are destroying society. It's a fun, colorful, epic fantasy comedy. If you like comic books, you're going to love it because Wokebusters is the funniest comic book that's going to drop in 2023. I'm well into it right now, folks, and it'll be out this year to line up with the new Ghostbusters film. So if you enjoy Ghostbusters, if you enjoy laughing, if you enjoy being alive in general, Wokebusters is the comic for you. Go to WokebustersComic.com right now to check that out. And if you're an angry Star Wars fan, be on the lookout because I have limited quantities left of the original printing of Stealing Solo, which I'm going to make available. Stealing Solo is about a 92-page graphic novel, beautifully perfect bound, high-gloss pages, all of that wonderful stuff. Why do I tell you that? Because if you go out to the mainstream stores and buy a Spider-Man comic, you're going to get crappy paper quality, a uh, crappy story, you're just paying $20 for the IP. But buy my book for the same price and get way more story, get entertained and have a good time and basically get invested in the future of entertainment because there are a ton of us out here that are making our own independent content because the big guys can't make anything that's worth your time. But we can, and here at WCBS, I have twice. If you're into beautiful ladies, check out Tits and Art. It's a big 11 by 17 book with beautiful women in it. And if you like fantasy, if you like nerd culture, if you like movie parodies, it's the book for you as well. So folks, check out the links in the description below. I'll be back next time with more. But in the meantime, be smart, be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other.